Just uh, thank you, Milos. I really, really appreciate uh, you guys uh, having me uh, having me here. Um, as um, as Milos said, he and I've been been buddies for quite a long time and uh, known known each other for a while. So I will try to not take as much as as much of your time. I'll go for try to keep it in an hour, and we'll be in and out here. So um, just a little bit about me. Like I'm 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 from Serbia, obviously, same as Milos. Um, I do. I did play. Uh, I played college soccer down at North Georgia University of North Georgia. Now it was a uh, North Georgia College of State back in the day. Um, um, I, I, I played in the, in the same same as Milos played in the civil clubs back home, and but this is where it was my first stop here in the U.S. So um, currently I, I work. I guess this is a little bit upside down, but it's a, currently I work with. Chicago Red Stars. So I'm um, I'm an NWSL assistant and a goalkeeper coach here with Chicago Red Stars, and um, I'm a director of goalkeeping and I'm actually recruiting coordinator with the Clip Select. Um, also, I work with uh, with the national team with the goalkeepers always. Sometimes with the youth 20s or youth 23s depends which age group they send me to. But um, why uh, why why I'm a little bit passionate about recruiting, whatever I've been and all my staffs stops at the universities. Wherever I've been as an assistant, assistant women's soccer coach, I, I, I enjoyed um, um, also role of the recruiting coordinator. And I, I really, really, it was a big part of uh, my job. And I, I really enjoyed that piece of, um, you know, start to finish uh, working with the student athletes. And um, as you can see, I, I've been in NAIA, Division Two, II, Division One, so kind of multiple levels. So I'm very, very fortunate to get experience in all. And then again, I've been a director of coaching in a small club, uh, director of uh, on the girls' side, and then a little bit with ODP and um, back in the day with the W League in the, in the women's side with the Slovaks. And then uh, also we do have a small goalkeeper academy that we run and just kind of help out where we can goalkeeping-wise. So uh, whenever it comes to recruiting, uh, what I really would like tonight to kind of cover, it's... Uh, First of all, just explain some opportunities and chances and just kind of different levels. Talk a little bit through a couple of a uh, 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 few, few different years as a freshman, sophomore, junior and senior in high school. And then uh, just talk a little bit briefly about information or process and give you some small tips that can help you down the, down the road. And then uh, give you some sample letter, letters, letters as well that um, or emails nowadays that Milos can kind of uh, I'll give this presentation to Milo, Coach Milos, and, and he will send it out to everybody so you guys, uh, you guys can have it. Please, at any point of time, if you can, um, if you do have a questions about something, you can um, write it down on a piece of paper for you, and then we can ask at the end. Or if you want to just just uh, write it down in the chat box as we go, feel free to do so. We'll check that chat box at the end and uh, and answer as many questions as we can. Um, so that um, just we cover all all the small bases that we need to cover, and um, and then uh, again, if if we have some questions, please feel free to ask. Um, if you want to take a notes, uh, now it's time to grab grab the pen and and uh, and then some paper pad, and we get going here. So uh, just Milos, this stopped. Can you hear me, Milos? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, something is. And obviously, as, okay, here we go. I guess we're moving. Um, so college soccer opportunities, just kind of for a little bit to understand. There is um, athletic departments in, at a collegiate level. Obviously, everybody knows what Division One is in, in, a, in a big Division One schools. But also, NCAA has other, two other divisions, Division Two and Division Three. I will talk about this just in a bit. There is completely separate organization, NAIA, and then there is completely separate organization that's run by junior colleges, so National Junior College Athletic Association. So in all those uh, schools, there's uh, between all those schools, on, you can see it on the right, between the, the women's and the men's programs, there's about, you know, roughly um, about 1,200 women's programs, and there's slightly, slightly, just a slightly less uh, men's programs in this country, but still, uh, there is there is uh, a quite quite number of opportunities for for men's soccer as well. 
Um, these numbers for me personally, what I want to say is, is just there is every person on this call, every person, every person on this call has the place somewhere to play college soccer, 100%. There's 100%. And, and the biggest thing I, will, I would like us to take out of this presentation is that the, this, this, uh, uh, this process, the recruiting process is really, really unique. Uh, and it, it is different for everybody. So uh, between all those schools, there is a place for you, whoever that you are. And, and, and there is, it just depends what you're looking for, uh, how far away from home and so on and so forth. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, in a different level, when it comes to different levels, you know, obviously everybody knows for Division One, different size and academic levels. Um, the, the, the biggest difference between Division I and other places is that the athletic budgets are, are pretty big. Uh, lots of those schools are driven by football, American football, and they generate quite a decent revenue. Basketball, so they generate quite a decent revenues. The TV deals are big. So the, probably the football and basketball are kind of the sports that, that drive that budget and you know from from the size of the school and size of the budget they have it depends how much money they put in the certain sports and you can see i mean everywhere from from stadiums and then facilities and training grounds and um you know just like a gear and, and amenities for our student athletes you know that some of some schools have just a um you know better quality athletic standards than the others but um again across the board across the board every, in that in division one everybody's allowed 14 scholarship for women and 9.9 .9 scholarship for the men um doesn't mean that every single school has a 14 scholarship they can have up to 14 so you know some schools have 10 some schools have 11 some schools have you know 12 just depends where you're at and where it is uh same way same way on men's side it's a 9.9 .9. Um, but those scholarships is not like it's a little bit different than football and basketball. So in football and basketball, it's one for one. So there's nothing other than a full ride. In a women's and men's soccer, there is a partial scholarships. And so this 14 or 9.9 .9 scholarships are divided amongst the members of the roster. So, you know, uh, sometimes there, there is a way you can get uh, – uh, half of the scholarship, you can get 4.75%, you know, so it just, it, sorry, you can get 75%. So it just depends how that particular program or coach is dividing that, that, th those scholarships. Uh, Division two, uh, they're smaller size schools, still very, very good academically. Usually they're self-funded athletic departments and um, with, a, with a pretty good budget. Uh, now there is there is still football in Division Two, but the football is smaller, right? Like a, a, a smaller stadiums, smaller revenues, no much the no much about the TV money and TV deals. So um, you know the, the 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 budgets are a little bit smaller. Um, same thing with uh, with uh, with the travel. Like so, for example, while in Division One you fly from East Coast to the West Coast to play the game. Division two is just a little bit more regionally based. So Southeast, Northeast, uh, you know, Central, whatever. It, it, it is a little bit more uh, regionally based and it's a, it is a little bit more regional travel, you know, for, for um, in division two, currently um, there is a, they, they can have 9.9 .9 scholarship for women and nine scholarship for men. Uh, again, it depends on the, on the place to place and, you know, I worked, I worked at a university where, uh, you know, at Columbus State in Georgia, and we were, I mean, they are still are like one of the powerhouses in Division Two, and we operated on a, on a very, very small budget, like pretty much on a four scholarship for, for all scholarship, four scholarships for entire, entire team. So, you know, it just depends again on athletic departments, depend, depends on the size of school, depends on a lot of small factors, but um, typically those those budgets are smaller. Lots of good Division two schools, lots of good size schools, lots of different size schools, lots of different places. So please check it out, those out. Division three, majority of Division three uh, athletic departments and, and programs, or men's and women's programs are private. Th those are in the private schools. So 81% of those uh, schools in Division three are private. 
um, no athletic scholarships. So in, in Division Three, um, there is no athletic. There is no scholarships for athletic ability, right? All the all the scholarships are academic, in or uh, need need financial base. So um, it, it, there's no there's no athletic scholarships. More balanced between athletics and academics. So um, main difference um, in Division One, Division Two, and NAIA. Um, main difference um, in uh, to Division Three is that during the spring semester, uh, there is a little bit less sport and a little bit, and obviously a lot more academics. So for example, in division one in the spring, now there it's a little bit different with COVID. So we gotta be aware of that. There's games going on right now, but in a traditional year, right? Uh, in division one, uh, some soccer program can play five games while in division three, they can play only one game. So um, in division one, there is, I think, uh, about um, 13 or 14 weeks of training. So they can train about 13, 14 weeks, about roughly, while in division three, they can only train two or three weeks. So it just, those are some, some rules that kind of like, just to balance a little bit more athletics and academics. NAIA, it's a separate governing body from NCAA. Um, it is a very, NAIA schools, I think they're very, very similar to Division II. Um, you know, there is a little bit, um, they are, they used to be, they're, they're getting stricter and stricter as well on, on, a, on a, um, um, uh, amateurism status of the athletes. So guys and girls that come, come and play in NAIA are like a little bit older. They, they can be, they, they, they can be some, some, some older guys, ladies and men who played at a very, very high level. There is some, I mean, whenever we talk about the levels, and I will say this at the end, there are some, some very, very good NAI schools and with the very, very powerful pro programs, they can win a lot of games. So, uh, but overall, they're very, very similar to, to Division II schools by size and, and how they operate as far as athletic departments. Uh, 12 scholarships for women, 12 scholarships for men, a little bit more money involved in it. So, again, uh, really, really good opportunity for student athletes. And then there's junior colleges. Those are two-year schools. They're separate governing governing body from NCAA and NAIA. Um, usually they have 18 scholarships for women and 18 scholarships for men. Um, a lots, a lots of good junior college schools. So, usually, if you go to junior college, you will go there for two years and then you will transition in one of those NCAA or NAIA schools uh, right away after, after your second year, uh, second year in school. So um, again, I, I, I do understand that everybody in, and anybody wants to play in division one, that's just a part of it. But at the same time, I just want to throw this out there that uh, there is a lot of good Division one, division two, division two, division three, NAIA schools, junior colleges. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, there is a lot of good soccer programs out there that, you know, sometimes we we label it by this division one label and and just kind of stick with it, and we don't want to look anything else. And I think that's that's one one mistake that a lot of young young folks make. Just. Uh, my biggest advice I can say, I can ha I can give you is just be open-minded. And I will say throughout, you'll hear me say that throughout the presentation a lot. A uh, few, 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 like just uh, advices as a, as, as a high schooler. I know there's some eighth graders here, eighth graders, like, I don't know, maybe even seventh graders, but like um, if you are eighth, seven or eighth grade, just enjoy yourself, be a, be a good soccer player, just learn as much as you can. I tried to have a good grades. That's the best advice. Just sit and enjoy a little bit and don't think about this college game yet, but think about how can you develop. Same thing here for freshmen and sophomores, you know, um, a little bit, little bit more to start thinking about grades and GPA right off the bat. Sometimes we, we come in in a high school and, uh, you know, we're a little bit kind of like um, laxidaisical about grades and GPA, but, and then whenever we start, getting into junior and senior year, we kind of get a little bit worried about it. So um, please just start start worrying about grades and GPA right off the bat, because that's what will get you into school. And if you cannot get into school, you cannot play college sports no matter what. So 
uh, please just pay attention on how you do in school and 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 uh, and, and study. That's 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 another big piece of advice I can give you. Um, uh, as a freshman and sophomore, you want to slowly start taking your SATs, SATs and ACTs, or whatever other tests are out there that you can take, and just kind of start practicing those here and there. Um, it is it is important to start making a list of schools that you might be interested in, you know, in your area out there where you guys are at, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of great local schools, you know, DC is pretty close. Uh, Virginia is pretty close, right? Virginia Tech is out there uh, close to you guys. So like there is VCU, there, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good, good schools in the area. So you want to start kind of making some kind of list of schools that you might be interested in. Again, the easiest way to do is to say, hey, I want to play. It doesn't matter if you're a um, boy or a girl. You want to play in Carolina. Uh, you want to play Duke. You want to play for women. You want to play at Florida State. For men, you want to play at Maryland. Like it's th th those are the easy choices, right? Everybody will write those down. But it's not easy to get in those schools. So start to do a little bit more research and start to think a little bit deeper about it. So, um, you know, and, and I will talk about this in a bit whenever it comes to process, but start making lists of schools and have a little bit bigger list, have a little bit more extensive list, have a number one, number one choices, number two choices, and number three choices, have the backup. And I know as a, as a, as a young adult, you don't think that way sometime. And, um, you know, like you don't think about having an options when sometimes in life you'll need an option. So please, uh, it's not just making, I, I talked the other day with a, with a freshman, no, sophomore in high, in high school. And she told me, hey, I have these two choices. And if this, this one doesn't work, I, I, I'm pretty sure that this one will work. And she said something like, you know, Virginia and UCLA. And I'm like, yeah, no, I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe it'll work. But two choices as a sophomore are just not good enough. You know, it's not enough sometimes because... A lot of things depend on this recruiting process. So just uh, just have that in mind whenever you're making your list of schools. Uh, you can start visiting campuses on your own. You're not allowed to go on official and official visits and meet the coaches and stuff. But, you know, if you guys play a game a um, little bit south of you, like hour or two drive or north north of you, like whatever, you, like whatever you go to play the game. And if you're driving by the campus of some school, X, Y, and Z school, stop by just stop by just drive through just drive through with your parents you know like just uh just swing by like some of you guys go and play some tournaments in florida or or this weekend supposed to be some ecnl showcase in houston or um you know wherever you go like yeah you play a game and you go to disneyland and it's great don't take me the wrong way i think disneyland is great i never been but i heard it's really good so like but spend some time um, go, go visit some school, just go walk around UCF, uh, you know, uh, go walk around like, you know, this is central Florida is down in Orlando. So like, if you're in Orlando, like, uh, just go walk around the school a little bit, you know, just see, see the campus. Maybe you will learn a little bit what you like and what you don't like and, and what kind of campus you like and, and stuff like that. And I will talk about this in a bit, but Start visiting some schools on your own. Again, on the drive-bys, if you have older sister and she's going for a college visit or, or the older brother and he's going for college visit, jump in the car, go with him, drive around the campus, see what it is about. You can always stop by the soccer field. Nobody cannot stop you from, you know, if it's locked up, you can peek through the gate and stuff like that. You can do those kind of things on your own. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to always rely on a coach's or you don't have to always set up the visit. Go visit campus on your own. Uh, you can start emailing college coaches. You can start emailing. There's nothing that uh, stops you from emailing and calling college coaches. Nothing. Nothing. doesn't matter how old are you. You don't need to be too young. But, you know, if you know that you're really, really interested in a certain, a certain school, you can start emailing. Like, and, and that, that is absolutely okay. Now, June 15, after your sophomore year going into your junior year, is the time when college coaches can respond to you. So um, you can email and call at any point of time what they can only say, hey, you're too young. I cannot talk to you right now. 
here is fill up this questionnaire, come to the camp, whatever it is, but they cannot talk to you about recruiting and they cannot technically have a recruiting conversation with you, right? But again, that doesn't stop you from going to, uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 uh, they cannot, that doesn't stop you from emailing them and contacting them. And that's fine. Now, you don't want to contact them 50, 50, 55 times in a week, but you know, dropping a, a, a email before the tournament, uh, dropping an email before the, before the showcase, uh, saying, Hey, I'll, I'll be in your, uh, in your area playing game. I might stop by ca campus. That's absolutely fine. hundred percent, hundred percent. June 15th, as I said, after your sophomore year is a time when college coaches can start having a recruiting conversation back and forth with you. It can be a phone call, email, text, Facebook, Twitter, whatever different ways. And that's for division one schools, division two schools. It's a little bit earlier than that. Um, and I, uh, sorry, I just don't know exact date, but division threes, they can, they can contact you at any point of time, at any time, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, they can contact you anytime. Same thing for NAIA schools, same thing for, for JUCO junior colleges. So th there is a schools that you can communicate regularly with all the time. As a freshman, as a sophomore, it is time to go to some ID camps. It is time to go to some clinics. Um, I, I, we are, uh, you know, I do think it is important to be selective with those. And you don't want to be breaking the bank of your parents and going to every single ID camp that you can like you can go to but like there are certain places and certain camps that you probably want to visit and you want to see and, and you want to get eval from and and stuff like that so this is a good time as a freshman probably after your freshman year probably some throughout your sophomore year and probably between the sophomore and junior year is probably when you would you would want to hit a two or three or four good id camps that a maybe where a lot of college coaches are or a b the, the places that you want to be at. So, you know, those are, I do think going to ID camps where there is multiple college coaches, I do think that always helpful, uh, especially if there's multiple level of college coaches. Uh, sorry, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Multiple level of college uh, programs involved. So is it Division One, NAAA, Division Two? You know, more of those kind of camps, more versatile camps you can, you can be at, the better it is for you. Then, uh, you know, we have a junior year is a big, I think junior year is a big recruiting year. Um, you know, June 15th, as a, again, like before the junior year, that co communication with the college coach and, and the player can, can start to be a little bit more intensive. Um, August, usually you got to apply for NCAA Eligibility Center. If you haven't done that in your junior, please make sure you do that. Uh, you have to, you have to be, uh, you have to have this um, eligibility number in order to do visit or uh, you know play in NCAA this is where your transcripts goes as a high school all the small things and you have to stay uh, stay in tune with your uh, uh, account and you need to make those updates you, you receive the updates but you got to make them yourself um, uh, amateurism status and stuff like that all that goes through eligibility center you know there are certain classes that you got to take there is certain core classes in the high school that you have to have. And, um, and I'll, I'll mention that uh, in a minute. September 1st, unofficial and official visits are now permitted. Uh, the, the main difference, um, so there is a visit when you can go on your own. Uh, there's unofficial visit when you can go and meet up with the college coach uh, and they can take you for a tour and they can, um, they can show you around the campus and you know, like you, you, can, you can spend some time with the players and stuff like that. Uh, and there's official visits. Uh, main difference between unofficial and official visits is where uh, on official visit, pretty much school that uh, is interested of you coming to the visit actually pays for your visit. So and pays for your parents for flight or one parent for a flight or a, or a, you know sometimes there is money for gas or you know they pay for your hotel stay, they pay for your food and meal and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, there, there are certain, there are certain guide, guidelines, you know, like what they can and cannot do, but you are definitely um, allowed for official visits and you're allowed for five official visits, five official visits. So you want to be careful how you choose those. If 
you know, like just a, again, personal advice, I will do some local schools and places around your own home, kind of like I'll do those unofficially. And if school from California wants to see you play or school from Florida wants to, wants, sorry, wants you to come on campus, then I will use obviously those as official visits. So, you know, you know the flight is provided for you and your family. So, uh, sorry, one family member. So again, just kind of having that ideas back and forth, what you want to do. I think it's it's a uh, it's a good whenever planning the visits. Uh, end of the semester, you know, checking your check with your counselor in your high school. Again, these 10, 10 of sixteen core classes. I'm not specialist in this, but I know there's English and math and natural uh, some sciences that need to be you have to have by that time. So you are NCAA ed eligible. Um, you know, it's a little bit different for NAIA or or junior colleges. So making sure if you're missing one English class that you can take. Uh, you can take that class in a semester or so. So your counselors in a high school, they know all this. They usually do. Majority of you guys are taking, are already taking the right classes. Excuse me. Um, majority of you guys are taking the right classes anyway, but, you know, it is important to, to keep in track of those and making sure you're on, staying on top of those. Uh, in the second semester, you know, you, it's now time to take ACT and SIT. Give yourself time. Give yourself a couple of trials. You never know. Um, why I say this, you never know, is because academically, yes, there is athletic scholarships, right? There is athletic scholarships. There is scholarships for you playing soccer. But a lot of you, a majority of you, can earn actually academic money in a lot of institutions. So ACT and SAT and, and GPA is really important. So if a school can give you a 30% and you can earn another 30 or 40% of your academic money, it's a 70% no matter what. So it doesn't matter where that money is coming from. And I know it's, it's sometimes it's like, oh, I just, you know, like I hear kids say all the time, like, oh yeah, but I'm, they're just offering me a walk-on spot, but I can get, I can get, 60% academic money. And I'm like, what are you waiting for? Like, what is the problem? Oh, but they're just a walk. -on. It doesn't, again, the scholarship, the, the scholarship is the scholarship. The less money you have to pay, the better you are off, the better parents you're off. So, you know, it, it is, I think, I think personally getting that extra academic money is, it is super important, you know, um, planning ahead. Uh, this is a big part, you know, so you, you know, planning ahead for those uh, tests, it's very because those those majority of those tests are on Saturdays. So letting your club coach know so you're not missing like you know the, so coaches know hey this is a SIT date so they don't schedule the stuff and stuff like that. Just working around a little bit. You gotta be responsible. You gotta communicate those things. Um, uh, slowly at the end of the junior year, you know you can start applying for some schools. You can put in some applications, especially if you're committed and you know where you're going. Um, uh, and sometimes some, some high level academic schools, they want to, your transcripts a little bit earlier so they can look at your scores and, and, and see where, where you stand and if they need to help, some, if they, if they need to help some or not, uh, schools can admit, um, some schools can, 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 uh, admit you in a school, uh, even after six semesters. So after your junior year, sometimes some student athletes go earlier semester. That's been very, very popular lately. Uh, for for uh, for folks to get in there early and get a little bit time under their belt because before actually start start of the season, um, and then in your senior year, you know November and there is two signing dates for soccer November and February. Um, uh, you gotta get NLI in, so that's a national letter of intent. You know, it's pretty much like a contract between the school and a, and a player or a school and a student athlete. Um, it is a contract and it is signed. But at the end of the day, if something happens at any point, school can pull that contract out and you can pull out a contract as well. So it is a binding document. But at the same time, you know, if you if you do something, you know, that's not appropriate or you feel like that's not right place for me, usually that contract can be break on either side and that that is fine but usually this contract protects you and your scholarship from certain things um, down the road uh, and then may 1st uh, we always put this for for our kids here at eclipse in chicago it is a deadline for uh, submitting the fafsa 
you know, and, and there is, if you go on a financial aid in a school, uh, there is a tab that's it's called the financial aid. If you click on that, you can learn a lot about the scholarship, certain scholarships that you can receive. It is amazing how many different scholarships are available there. Um, I just put FOSFA in there because lots of, lots of, um, lots of kids can get that, but like, there are different levels of minority scholarships. There are different levels of certain schools, um, you know, allow certain scholarships for certain achievements. So I don't want to just be uh, throwing it out there, but definitely please any school that you're, you're, you're applying for. Like, so for example, just the one example, if your mom and dad went to it, they're alumni of a certain school, you can get certain scholarships. So again, just kind of having that in mind, as as you are uh, you're applying for your schools, right? Some information, you know, like uh, when trying to find a right fit. Again, I said this at the beginning. Like this process is all about you, whoever that you are, and and um, whenever you're trying to find a right fit, there are some good things to consider, right? Uh, I think academics are massive. I think academics is is number one priority. I always I always believe that and. It is very, very important. Uh, you know, sometimes distance from home, um, you know, it is, uh, sorry, just about academics here for a second. Like, um, uh, let's say you want to study marine biology, right? There is a very, very limited number of schools that uh, offer marine biology. I know Miami is one of them. I know San Diego, I think it's one of them. And I think like Florida Gulf Coast is one of them. So like, if, if you do want to study something very, very specific, uh, you have to do your research, right? If you want to be engineer, you know, like, I, I don't know, the, here in the Midwest, like Purdue University and um, University of Iowa, like those are like a big, big, big engineering schools, right? Like, it just depends what you want to study. So please, dependable on academics, you have to do your research so you can make, you can help you make your list, right? distance from home, how far away from home you want to go. We always say, hey, just take a take a pen and, and, and a string and tie the, the pen for the string and put a put a middle of wherever your, your home is and just draw the line how far away from home you want to go. Some people say, hey, I want to be about three, four or five hours, you know, so mom and dad can come and see me play. But, you know, I still want to be a little bit farther from home and you know, but I want to be drivable distance so I can go home for a weekend. Some folks say, hey, I'll just, you're on the East Coast and you want to go on the West Coast and, you know, and that's fine. Some some folks say, hey, I want to, I have a cousin in, uh, I just, I, we have one of our kids here in Chicago and there. she says that she wants to go to North Carolina. She has some cousins there and, you know, she will feel comfortable being away from home but being close to her cousins and she would like to find a school in North Carolina. So again, whatever that is from you, as far as distance, distance from home, what's important for you, I think it's a big, big, big deal. Size of the school, I think that's massive. I think that's massive. Like personally, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I went to a smaller school at the time and I didn't have a car. Um, I didn't have, uh, I, I flew over with the, with the two bags. So you know, big school, big campus, city school would not work for me. I needed to walk place to place. I needed to walk from class to class. I needed to walk from cafeteria to the, to the, uh, to, to my dorms and stuff like that. So that was important to me. So smaller school was a better fit. Again, um, personally, just to personally, I'm not, uh, I mean, even if we live in Chicago now, but we, I'm not a city guy. So like, I'm no, I don't like the city and like, it's not, it's not something that I, re I really like smaller campuses, something that that's like a little bit more like a college towns and stuff like that. So again, it, all of us are different, right? All of us like different things. Some of you guys love the big schools, football, basketball. That is absolutely fine. Yeah. hundred percent. No problems at all. Just gotta, just gotta, just gotta find the right fit for you. Um, size of the school campus, where is it located and stuff like that. It will be important, right? Soccer program, very important to connect with the coach, introduce yourself and learn more about the leadership style, learn about college, coaching philosophy, learn, learn about style of play. So just for example, if you're a midfielder, right? And you're, 
you're this crafty midfielder who likes to play, like you say, you're six and you try like to get in the ball and spray the balls and connect passes and, you know, but the thing that, you know, you're looking at or school you're looking at, it's like, it's a really, there's nothing wrong with the rec style of play, by the way. I love the rec style of play. So like somebody that just plays balls in behind and it's in transition all the time. And, you know, you as a midfielder are seeing ball like flying over your head back and forth. Then, um, you know, it is, it is, um, uh, it is something important to know, right? So like you ain't seeing much of a ball. You got to be good in heading the ball and winning the second, the first and the second ball. So just kind of understanding a little bit here and there with it, what, what's the beauty of the, this internet and the TV and, you know, yeah, sure. Throughout the COVID, there is a little bit problems with, um, there's no sports at all, but, but here is, is kicking off and every conference has a big 10 network, ACC network, big 12 network, you know, like uh, SEC network, you know, like there is ESPN plus and this and that. And, you know, there is soccer all over the place. Like, I mean, my wife and I, we, we really enjoy like putting on sometimes the, just the game and just watching like, you know, we watch like Big 12 all the time, Big 10 all the time, like Baylor and, you know, West Virginia and stuff like that. We, we really, really enjoy it. And, you know, just uh, sticking the game out there or, or over the dinner or something, just kind of uh, getting, getting, getting glance of it and understanding how the school play and style of play. You can learn a lot about uh, coach and stuff like that. So, again, connecting with the coach, I think that's massive. So you can learn what that person wants and, uh, how they operate and how they run the program is, is massive. Making the list, I said this earlier in the freshman year, that, that list needs to be big. I said here 20 schools, but but I would say, like, make it bigger. doesn't matter. And then start narrowing it down. Start working down. I always think it's better to have the options than not to have the options. And, and that's, you know, we have a couple – older like we have a couple seniors and it's never late by the way that's that's another thing that's really massively important it's never late we have a we just got a senior that just committed to boston college like she's a senior so she's graduating in three months and she's a forward and she just committed to boston college like just committed just like like a, a week ago so it's never late but what happened to that particular kid she had some options she was kind of waiting and this and that, and then something happened in the family, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, she suddenly doesn't have a place to go, and somehow, some way, she, she, she got into Boston College. So it, it is, it is, it's never late, but you have to work. You have to work and, 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 uh, and, and get those lists sorted and, and then connect it to college coaches. Again, as I said earlier, June 15 is the time when college coaches can connect with you, but you – can connect college college coaches at any any point right um preparations for events tournament tournaments games camps clinics whatever it is before before the tournament before the event you have to train you have to be the best as you can be at the craft that you do you have to train throughout the year in order to perform at the highest level as possible and especially when it's needed especially when it's needed you have to perform when somebody's watching, you have to perform when somebody's evaluating. Uh, there's always somebody evaluating. So like you have to train hard and, and work hard in order, in order to perform at the highest level when necessary. Uh, contacting college coaches in advance before the tournaments, emails, phone calls. Uh, there's always the tournament page where re college coaches register. Sometimes they're, they're typically they're on a the website, but sometimes they're, sometimes they're not. Uh, those lists, they usually include the emails and the phone numbers and, you know, you can contact the college coach. But even, even with this day and age, like especially in this COVID time, right, because it is a dead period and college coaches cannot contact you right now. They cannot, uh, sorry, they cannot go out and recruit and watch the games. They, all of them watch these games online and a lot of them are watching games like late games or, you know, like they don't watch a live stream, but they can watch it later uh, archived and so on and so forth. So please, um, I think even if your coach that you're the school coach of the school that you're interested in is not on that list, uh, just email them, just email them, call them, let them know that you're there. Never knows, you know? Um, but also, uh, I would say this is more of a little bit for after the event, but 
please follow up uh, email before, sorry, sorry. Uh, make sure whenever you send initial email about two weeks prior to the tournament, that you always follow up with the email uh, on a week of the tour of the week of the tournament. Like I think that's really important, just to remind the coach. And I, I have this um, I have the sample of the email at, at the, at the in, in a, on the back back pages. But you know, in your initial email, you have to introduce yourself. You have to introduce yourself. You have to say why you're interested in a certain school. Why? What is that that you really interests you? Hey, coach, you have a great biology program in your school. I want to be a biologist. Or like, hey, coach, like, I, I like I really like some 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 certain um, um, like major in your school, but I also like like your soccer program and the way you play. I watch you play multiple times. We can maybe say some specific game. Um, you know, you have to introduce yourself. What do you do well um, and on a soccer field? You got to know your strengths. You got to know your weaknesses. Um, introducing yourself in terms of like. Um, uh, just like simply a little bit about yourself and what what you do outside of the game and, and hey I, I play in a, in a school band and you know whatever that is some extra extracurricular activities uh, and then saying why you're interested and then saying hey we are playing at a XYZ tournament uh, here's my schedule um, I think something that's very very important is hey I play I play for this team uh, I, I wear, I play this position and I wear this number. I think that's massive. That's, you know, like not name, number, position, club team, email address that somebody can contact you, email address of your college, of, of your, of your club coach, contact info so people can follow up and stuff like that. Those are very, very basic information that you have to have on the email. During the event, there's nothing you can do but play hard, compete and showcase yourself. No one, no one, absolutely no one cannot help you with this. Coaches can help you prepare, but no one cannot help you at the moment. And during the during that particular moment for you to, hey, there's nothing else you can do, but you can work hard, you can compete, and you can showcase yourself the best as you can. You don't control your playing time. You do not control, is it muddy? Is it sunny? Is it nice pitch? Is it grass? Is it turf? Is it snowing a little bit? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You don't control a lot of things, but what you can control whenever you cross that white line and you're on a pitch, you control your attitude and you control how competitive you are, and you can control how hard you play, and and you can control what you do on the ball. That's 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 you. That nobody else can help you with that. And then after the event, you know, usually you gotta follow up with the email, phone call, um, you know. You gotta continue the communication in your with the school that you're interested in. And sometimes, listen, guys. Sometimes these guys are really these college coaches are really really busy, and they they have a lot of things going on. So sometimes they do uh, they do um, they do get caught up with a lot of things, and sometimes they don't respond to the emails. And that's fine. That's fine. It is absolutely okay to email a couple times saying that you'll come watch some game. You'll come see them play. Um, you'll come for some ID camp. You would love for them to come see you play next event and so on and so forth. I have a sample of emails at the end that you guys can look at. A few things here that can just help you. Um, that can just help you. Just give you a little bit, just kind of almost like a tips, right? Um, do your homework. Uh, again, very important. What's important to you? Uh, what fits you? All of us are different. Um, this is your process, your process. Just because your buddy or your friend or your girlfriend or your best friend or whatever it is committed yesterday, it doesn't mean that you have to commit today or tomorrow. Um, go at your pace, find a school that's right fit for you, take your time, uh, no rush, make sure you do due do, do diligence, do your homework, find right, si right academics, find right a soccer program for you, fi find what is that that's important to you. Personally, personally, again, just the, I could not go to school that didn't have a, I didn't have a full ride at. I could not afford any money to pay for the school, any money. I could not afford a penny. So I had to have a full ride to go to school. That was me. Nothing else didn't matter to me. Like it, it was just a, it, that, that was important. That was very, very important. You know, like I knew I could fight for playing time. I'll find some good academics that I can I can I, I can do 
um, size of the school. I wanted a smaller school, so that that was good. But scholarship was important to me. There was nothing nothing wrong with that. My parents couldn't afford it. Some people scholarships are not imp important. You know, playing time is important. Uh, some is size of the school, some academics, some location. So again, this is your process. I cannot I cannot say that enough. Um, be prepared to write and talk who you are and what you do. Uh, you got to communicate your brand. All of us, um, I'm guilty of this. All of us are on this Twitter and Instagram and, and Chattergram and all that. Um, but uh, again, understanding we use our phones a lot today to communicate. We lose a, use the text messages. We use the pictures and this and that. But this process is just a little bit different because you got to communicate you got to talk to somebody and, uh, you know, the, the, it is, it is uncomfortable, you know, and that's why having a multiple schools and almost kind of like a practicing that communication as you go through the process is very important because it is, it is difficult. And can you imagine it's a difficult for college coaches as well? Let me tell you. Uh, and I say this all the time. It's like, you know, talking to, 17, 18, 19 year old girl on the phone is not that easy as much as like, you know, it is kind of funny and stuff, but it, it is very, very difficult. So, but you got to communicate, you got to communicate your brand and who you are. So, and this is not bragging about yourself. This is about co being confident who you are. Uh, you got to know what you do well, and you got to know what you need to get better at, please. If you don't know those two things, whenever it comes to soccer, go ask your club coach. Go ask your coach so you can you can get this idea. That is the number one priority for you to know what you do well and what you need to what you need to get better at. Like and and as a player, if you're 15, 16, 17, and you don't know this, please just go find out right away. Because if you're a midfielder, like you know, I, I I remember talking to some kids and they're like, "Hey, what do what do you need to improve on?" Oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm really good. I can I don't I'm I don't know no nothing nothing. That was that was like whoa 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 easy like you know that was kind of red flag right. So this kid just doesn't know who who she or he is right. So just being understanding what you do well in the field and what you need to improve on is is very very important. Being persistent. Um, what does certain coach wants to from a player it's the same as you know like you guys have a different teachers in school and all of them are looking for something different um it's the same here like every coach is a little bit different uh you have to you have to learn and 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 and, and understand what coach wants to see from the player you have to be persistent in in your in your approach you have to again with communication and persistence comes that clear clarity and understanding, okay, what I'm getting myself into. Uh, uh, this, this is a big one for me, just preparing for rejection, you know, and, and, and a reality of rejection. And this is the, probably one of the times that in, in, in your life, if, you know, um, um, and I'll just tell you a quick story. Like um, there's the kid uh, back in the day at ODP at a U12, the first ODP team, whatever it is, um, there was a kid in Atlanta that I, um, I I was a goalkeeper coach and, you know, I had a seven or eight goalkeepers. And at some point I had to cut down to five at the age group. All of you guys played ODP. You know how that works. And I cut her. She was a sixth on the list. She was a sixth on the list. I will not say her name, but um, um, she was a sixth on the list. And, um, and, uh, and I had to cut her. I cut her from ODP team. So, um, what happened, I'm with the Chicago Red Stars today, and she's actually one of, one of the goalkeepers in my preseason. She's 19 years old. She's going to college, but she's training with the first team with the Red Stars right now. Um, and, uh, and that is pretty cool. That is, that is really, really, really cool story for me. Like, she got rejected back in the day, and, and, and she, was, she was 12 at the time, and that kid is so bright, smart. She's going to go to Princeton and play college at Princeton, but um, play at Princeton – college soccer but uh, like she sat down and she said and I remember her mom telling me a story she came back and she said hey coach cut me and but I'm going to get better I'm going to develop and I'm going to to continue grow as a player and and it's the same thing here with this process um, 
like, yes, you will knock on a 20 doors and 15 will be closed, but five of them will be open or, you know, like you gotta be, you gotta be ready for some schools that you are really, really, really want to go to might say, no, we don't need you or we don't have a room for you. You know, if you're a goalkeeper, I say this all the time, there's only some schools have three, some schools have only two, some schools maybe have four, but you know, if they have a goalkeeper in your age group they, and they don't need the goalkeeper, then you know, it is, it is very, very difficult. So, and you have to be prepared for that. You have to be prepared for that rejection. That's just um, uh, life. That's how it works in life. It's the same way as interview process for a job. You might not get one job, but you might get the next job. So you just have to continue working on it and head cannot go down. Uh, you have to explore your options and be open-minded. A lot of times, again, like we want to play division one and division Division one only, and we don't want to look at in any other divisions. And this is just for school kids from out of Chicago. There's a school here called Illinois Wesleyan Women's Soccer, and they were Division three, three Final Four just a couple of years ago. Grand Valley State in Michigan, Division two uh, champions. I mean, their their Grand Valley State Women's Soccer is the program with the most wins in NCAA in any division in the history of women's soccer. They won a tremendous amount of games. I mean, they won over 200 games in the last 10 years. So that's 20 plus games every year, last 10 years. That is so difficult to do. That's so difficult to do. I remember when I was at Columbus State, Grand Valley State and Columbus State were kind of, you know, they were on the north, north, uh, they were like a, like a central, like a, like a, uh, in Michigan. And we were down in Georgia and we played in, 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 in final fours and, you know, competed back and forth. And I mean, just a tremendous programs, tremendous programs, great coaches, great facilities, great programs. So don't overlook them, you know, here, Chicago University, like uh, it's a division three school, school men's soccer, they're in the final four. I know down in Atlanta, for example, Emory University is a massive, great school, great medical school, unbelievable institution, hard to get into. And they have a tremendous uh, uh, men's and women's soccer program. So, again, just kind of being open-minded with those, it's really important. It's really important to represent yourself really well, representing yourself, your family, your coach, uh, this club particularly that you're at. Uh, you know, if, if you do represent well yourself, it will, it will help you down the road. I remember sometimes walking by the field, I enjoyed as a recruiting coordinator, I enjoyed at the halftime just... I know this sounds like a little bit kind of crazy, but like just getting like, you know, how college coaches are on the sideline. I love being close to the, close to the, where coach is talking to the team and paying attention who kind of pays attention, who doesn't. And, you know, I, I, I really always enjoy that. And who's kind of like number, like looking at the sky and, you know, counting the birds and stuff like that. Like it, it is very important down the road. It is very, very important down the road. Um, that, that you represent yourself really well. Uh, when it's your turn, be ready. Do your job where your job needs doing. Make sure that you do your homework. Make sure you make your list. Make sure you email coaches. Keep your focus on the play. Uh, no, not who is there to watch. Don't worry about that. Just keep focus on your play. Keep focus on your play. Uh, make sure you follow up. And, and again, this kind of leads into the next one, but it goes back to the things that I said earlier. Regardless of the school, take a time to communicate. You never know. You never know. You ne absolutely never know. Uh, make sure that, that if somebody calls you, you follow up on a phone call and, and call it back. Make sure you follow up on your e own email. Make sure you, you are clear and, and precise in your communication. You never know. Coaches change all the time. Maybe coach in Division Two that really likes you takes the job in Division One, and maybe there's an opportunity for you. So just kind of being ready like that, and then at the end you gotta grow. Um, you gotta grow and learn. It might it might not be fun and easy at times, but it will well worth the pain in the long run. It will well well worth the pain. Like it will be well worth if you put your time, put your effort at the long run down the road. That 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 will be well well worth well worth well worth and and you know again just to Milos he's coach Milos he spoke English before he came and he was very good he's still very good I didn't speak any English 
I barely spoke any English, barely passed the tests, barely got in school. I barely spoke any English when I came, barely, barely any, any. I ate grilled chicken sandwich for a long time because I just, I just didn't know any different. So it was grilled chicken sandwich. It was the easiest. Lettuce, lettuce, tomato, tomato. Yeah, ranch, ranch, sure, no problem. Fries, fries, sounds good. Like whatever was offered, I took it be, just because I didn't know like what else to say. But, you know, slowly over time, I, 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 you know, like it is, it is, it is well, well worth it. I, I chose to grow and learn and develop and adopt and little things here and there. And that helped me down the road. Um, these are some emails, as I said, um, I will give this to coach Milos so he can, he can send it to you all and you can have it. So you can just kind of look through some, some ideas of the, of the emails and, and, uh, and the small things, um, here and there. So, yeah, Coach Milos, um, how you want to do some questions? That's about it, guys. I, I, I know there's lots of info. Again, we'll send this out um, um, throughout the – so you can have all the slides and stuff, and we can send this um, – Coach Milos is recording it, so he can share it with everybody. But um, let's, let's do some questions if there's some questions. If you want to type it in the chat, if it's easier for you, that's the, the best way, I think. If not, um, we can, Coach Milos, if you want to ask a couple of questions that you think are important that kids are kind of a little bit shy or whatever. Uh, I have here uh, some, some, some people already typing. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I would suggest that they go ahead and uh, just type in a question and I can read. And yeah. Try, they will respond. But yeah. I just want to say that, uh, again, I'm very thankful for you taking time and providing yeah. information because sometimes, you know, hearing from, from someone who is working on a very top level and been there and hearing from us on a daily basis what we are telling them, maybe maybe this is going to be a wake-up call and help them down the road. Uh, yeah. so I wish I wish somebody had, had or I, I'm sure you wish too, that somebody, like, just, you had a little bit of that. I, I didn't know anything. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. I, mean, I didn't even know what. What division two? I played in division two. I didn't know until, you know, I mean, just again, the story that I came in and coach send people in the subs, you know, like I didn't have a clue like that you can sub in and out all the time. Like I didn't have a clue. Like that was just new for me. Right. Exactly. So, so I have one question here. Uh, Amber Ignudo, she's 06 uh, girls player. She asked, uh, do official visits include D2 and D3 schools? Yeah. Uh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. But again, a lot of division two and division th three schools, they recruit a lot of locally. So um, they do, um, they, 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 there is a timeline that they can do them. I think it's a, it's a junior year, September 1st, but excuse me, but a lot of those schools don't have a funds to fly people around the country. Uh, so just kind of having that in mind, I, I know in the division school, two school that I was at, I don't know. I think in uh, three and a half years, two and a half, three and a half years that I was down there, we had out of like, I don't know. I mean, gosh, there was hundreds of kids on the visits that we had. Uh, we had one kid on official visit, one kid. And I remember going to pick her up from, from Florida and bring her all over and stuff like that. So um that, that we didn't we did not do many many official visits now a lot of schools do and uh yeah you should take advantage of that if 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 they do uh here is one more should we include a highlight video and emails to coaches yes yes and that's kind of in this this uh uh, this this uh, this is um, this is a great question and and especially in this day and age um um in this day and age when it's like, you know, COVID in a dead period, I do think highlight video is really, really important. Um, I do do think that highlight video is, uh, it's highlighting what you do well. It doesn't need to be super long. It doesn't need to be like a, like a, like a 10 minute video. I never made past like three or four minutes. Um, you know, I, I do think that that video is important to show a little bit of your abilities and just to catch the eye. And I think that if you're forward, 
make sure you put there that how you score goals and how you press from the front. Uh, if you're a defender, show there how you tackle, show there how you head the ball, show there how is your 1v1 defending, show how you pass out of the back, uh, show stuff like that. So like position specific. If you are forward and you're showing how you are like, you know, like absolutely, if you're a free kick specialist, show that on your highlight video. Absolutely. I had a question the other day, how much, like somebody asked me like, hey, is the music important in the highlight video? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, yeah, like, I mean, um, I, I do think that um, highlight video can be very, very helpful. Make it short, make it sweet. What you do really well, position specific, it will get you, it will get you opportunity to be seen against somewhere else. Perfect. Thank you, Rade. Um, I have here more now coming, I think. Yeah. Uh, so one, it's how often do you recommend sending updated video? Uh, I mean, here and there, every every two or three months, four months, five months, whatever whatever you feel like that you have done. Like, again, send, sending that repeated video is fine, but uh, just making sure that you don't, you don't, I'm not saying overstep, but you don't, um, uh, uh, you don't you don't do it too much, right? But updating it every every other every other month or after the showcase is absolutely fine. Thank you. Uh, here is one more. Uh, one of the girls she asked, "What is the best way to be seen from colleges?" Uh, yeah, I mean, again, sending a little introduction, little invite to the, your games. You can be seen at the college showcases. You can be seen in local games. Uh, let's say, I don't know exactly where you guys play all the areas, but let's say that you play close to school that you are interested in on Saturday. Maybe just dropping an email to coach and saying, hey, coach, we'll be in your area. I know your school is 15, 20 minutes away where we'll play. I, I would love if you if you get a chance to come see me play again. Right now, during this COVID times, it's really difficult. If you have some highlight videos, if, if you have some full game videos, it's really, really important, um, you know, so you can you can get those to the coaches so they can watch. I think that's important, um, you know, and just uh, – but college showcases, ID camps, local games, I think all of those are great, great opportunities to be seen. Here is another one. Um... What is the best way to approach a scholarship discussion with a coach? Uh, same as everything. Uh, every, like, I, I do think it's absolutely fine. Uh, uh, it's absolutely fine to be honest. Um, whenever the list, whenever you, uh, I talked about several times about lists and this and that and the other. And I do think that priorities are important. And, you know, same as, you know, academics, distance from home. Where does a scholarship fit, fit in that priority list? If it's really important to you, um, it, it, listen, it's absolutely fine to communicate with the college coach where you stand. And sometimes that makes it really, really easy. Uh, but but uh, when I, whenever I say it makes it easy, because if you say, hey, coach, this is what we can pay. We, we, she really wants to go to school here. This is what we can afford. And this is what we would need to make it work. And asking like, hey, where do we think I stand? It's absolutely fine. 100% fine. That's a big decision, guys. There's a lot of money involved. Um, you know, sometimes kids don't understand. It's, this is more parents thing. Like you have to be, I suggest every time when there is scholarship questions or scholarship conversations, I suggest parents to be on the phone with the kid. I think that because... Kids are not paying to go to school like parents are. And, and, and I think that's really important, you know, because not everybody's getting a full ride. And having this honest, open conversation with the, with the coach is absolutely fine. And I think even saying to the coach, hey, thank you so much for that offer. But we cannot, we just cannot afford that. There is no shame. There is no blame. And, and that's one big misconception with the, with the parents, you know, like, uh, I, I do think if you're honest and now we're talking between the bargaining and honest, right? Like you cannot like, yeah, college coaches will try to squeeze their budget and stretch it as long as they can 
so they can get as many as good players as possible. But at the same time, you know, like they have to understand same as they have a financial uh, kind of budget, same way the home, home, home has a financial budget as well. So I think it's absolutely fine to have honest, open conversation with the coach and, uh, and, uh, and sometimes club coaching help. I do think the club coach can help. And, you know, we do have sometimes uh, calls from college coaches and asking, Hey, what do you think this family can afford? And there is a times where we say, Hey, listen, there's, I, I I've been there as a college coach as well. I will call, call the club coach and say, Hey, can you tell me the, do you know that this, like, uh, I have a goalkeeper that wanted to go to the university of Iowa and her mom was like, Hey, we'll pay for her to go to university of Iowa. She'll be a walk on if they will take her. Like she'll be absolutely walk on like, and that was fine. That is absolutely fine. Okay. Just what it is. Thank you, Rade. Here is a question from uh, our year director, coach Carl. He said, uh, should emails to coaches include assistant coaches or should they only be directed to the head coaches? Yeah, usually, usually, uh, it's not always, but usually um, um, head coach has the recruiting coordinator, usually somebody's recruiting coordinator. I, 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 that's a great question. I do think that, that that email should go to the head coach and the assistant coaches copied on it um, and um, so that everybody's aware uh, who is uh, – who, like, uh, I think that's the best way. So you don't have to send three separate emails. Uh, absolutely fine to be titled, Hey, Coach Matt, if Matt is the head coach and copied all the, all the assistant coaches. I think that's a perfectly fine and absolutely acceptable. Thank you, Rade. Uh, here is one more. Would you suggest contacting current players at the school you're interested in? Um, yeah, yes, yes and no. Uh, yes and no, uh, because, uh, yeah, I mean, if you know somebody there and, and, and you are, uh, you have a cousin or you have a friend or you have a friend of a friend who knows somebody, absolutely, absolutely, why not? Uh, just contacting players out of the blue, I would not suggest, uh, you know, just writing an email to or like asking a question to somebody on Instagram, I, I would not suggest that if you don't know them. And then, uh, um, you know, if usually, um, usually when, when, uh, when, when is that time, probably college, college coach will, will, will reach out to some players and you will get to know the players and you'll get to communi communicate with the players and you will get to ask them questions. Um, I would not contact somebody that I don't know. Um, uh, again, when it comes to contacting the players, I want to be clear that, you should not contact the player saying that, um, saying that, hey, I'm interested in, in your school. Can you please help me out with the, with the college coach? Like, can you, can you help me with the coach? Here's my highlight and stuff like that. Uh, again, if you know them and you are feeling comfortable around them, absolutely, that, that, is, that is fine. But, uh, you know, just out of the blue, I would not do that. Okay. Uh, I have no more uh, questions here on the list, but I would just uh, leave to Coach Joe and Carl to see if they have any, any more questions and kind of slowly uh, wrap up. Oh, here you go. Here is one more. Uh, what consti constitutes official versus unofficial visits with D3 schools? Yeah, it's the same as everything else. Same as um, yeah, yeah, same as everything else. I, I do have to – I'll check on that for sure uh, just to make sure uh, there is a date – there is a date that they can bring kids on official visits, but I'm going to check on that and, 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 and get it to Milos so he can answer that. But it is unofficial and official visits in NCAA are exactly the same kind of concept. Thank you, Rade. Uh, Carl, Joe, do you guys have any questions? No, I do not. But thank you so much for your time. I think we all, all the players and the coaches learned a lot of information tonight and just a good refresher as well for the older players. I don't have any questions. I just looked up the, the D3 date uh, for visits. January 1 of their junior year, they can start official visits yeah. with D3. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I no appreciate problem. that.
Yeah, I think that's, that, that should be all. We're going to wrap up here. Rade, again, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, this was great. Uh, I personally enjoyed, like Joe said, refreshing my memory on some of these things and uh, keeping up to date. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and I hope in the future uh, we, can, we, we can do something else for the next time. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thank you, Roddy. Thank Thanks. you, everyone. Good luck with everybody. Thank you, Roddy, to you as well. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Thanks.